welcome to Creative Suite TV and in this episode we're going to create an illustration and in this case the illustration shall be of Michael Stoddart, the famous Adobe person Michael Stoddart. He's been with the company for a long time. He's a legend around here and I'm about to do an illustration of him based off a photograph. But if you're not arty, you, you're not really sure about what your illustration skills are like, don't panic. Please don't panic. I think just about anyone could do an illustration like this using the technique that I'm about to show you in Photoshop Touch, one of uh, Adobe's new mobile applications, and in this case on iPad. So this is the sort of result we're going to get. I'm going to talk you through step by step how to achieve something like this on just about any photograph that you may take. I also have presenter mode uh, selected on Photoshop Touch here so that um, as I go along, any gestures that I use on the tablet you'll see marked with a red dot. So really quite um, quite simple. So down here, the, um, the, the one next to the red dot there, that is Stodd. Uh, that's the one we've done. And here is the original photograph uh, just above that called Stodd Original. We're going to tap that and open that up in Photoshop Touch. That's step number one. There's a few different things that um, we're going to cover here, but step number one. There we go. So with this layer selected on the lower right hand side of screen there, I can click on this option here to do a few things. We can merge down, flatten image, delete layer, etc. Okay, so we're going to take advantage of some of these things, particularly the opacity, a little bit later on. The button next to that, the little plus sign, we can use that to duplicate a layer. We're certainly going to duplicate the layer in this case so that we keep the original um, untouched underneath. The next step that we're going to do is apply a blur. So this layer is going to be our fill color. And we don't want it to be completely photographic, so that's why we're going to apply a blur. Now this is where we go to the top of the screen where we can see a number of icons. So there's a, a transform tool there, we don't want that one. We have a number of adjustments for color adjustments as well. Um, we can play with those if we'd like to in increase the vibrance. And then we have effects. So the effect that we really want to get into here is the Gaussian blur. Okay, We can adjust the slider with our finger down the bottom here to make it more or less blurry. And I think for an illustrative type of look, I'm not going to tell you an exact amount to put in there because it will depend on the resolution of the photograph. Um, but I think around about there kind of looks nice. It certainly has the color um, blurred out, so none of the real detail. We don't need to worry about that detail too much. We can click apply and then there we go. Now the next step is we would like to define the edges a little bit of Stodd. I'm going to draw that with a black line. Now I know you don't have to be, I told you you don't have to be artistic. You do have to be able to trace something. That's really not too hard. Don't panic about that. We're going to add a new layer. This time it's going to be an empty layer and we'll just hide our blurred layer for the time being just by tapping on that little circle at the top left of the layer. Now the lower layer, we're going to then go back to our layer options which we, we spoke about earlier. We're just going to drop the opacity down. So this is going to give us our you know, probably drop it to around about 30, I think 30, maybe just a little bit more, maybe 40. That gives us a good amount of detail to be able to trace. So we reselect our blank layer and now we need to go and select some tools. So over to the tools, we can choose the paintbrush, select the paintbrush options, we're going to re reduce the hardness, so we click on the hardness slider sorry, increase the hardness, we'll increase the hardness there and then reduce the size. We're going to bring this way, 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 way down. I think we should get it down to around about two pixels if we can. That's a nice small one, maybe just a little bit. There we go, two pixels. So that's good. We make sure we've got our colour as set as black. You could do grey, like a dark grey if you wanted. I think we'll, we'll do black in this case. And then we, by using a, a pinch gesture, we can then zoom in and then start to trace 
Michael. Now in this case, you could use your finger. I'm using a stylus and I can easily just trace around. If you make a mistake, you can hit the undo button down there. So let's see if we can get his glasses around about something that is almost right. There we go. There's an ear. And then there we have it. And we can start to trace. If you find it difficult to see what's going on as you're tracing, you can go back to your bottom layer and just increase that opacity a little, just so you can see a little more detail. That's probably better. I think we had it a little bit light on. And then we can start to trace around. And then there we go. Now I won't let you, um, or I won't force you rather, to have to sit in on my tracing. We'll skip ahead. Well, I've now skipped ahead and uh, you can see I've, I've completed a number of different black outlines on this image of Stodd and to check I can turn off the background layers just so I can see what I've actually come up with and it's, it's kind of okay but we're far from finished. So I'm going to turn back on uh, my other layers there and you can see there's the blur layer. It's actually starting to come together a little bit. There's too much distracting stuff going on in the background and we really want to give it a slightly more painterly effect than this. We need to add another new layer and that's exactly what we're going to do. So under the little and symbol at the top here, you can see I've got fill and stroke, image size and all the rest of it. The one that we want to add is a gradient. We're going to add a gradient layer. Let's, let's press it. And there's a number of defaults here. Um, blue and semi-transparent. We need a completely opaque one because we want to black out the background. So let's choose this one here. And you can see it's going from top to bottom. We can shift these around. This is perfectly, uh, perfectly easy to do. We can move these about, change the angle, etc. Um, I'm going to leave it as is. I think it's okay. It's kind of the effect that we're after. You can change the colors and all the rest of it. Not necessary in this case. Let's press done. Now the trouble we've got here is it has obscured everything we've just done. So a little bit of a, a trap there. Let's, um, let's go back. We'll add a blank empty layer and then we'll apply our gradient. Let's try that. Done. Now we've got it. So you can see we've got our gradient layer. Immediately underneath that we have our image. Let's reorder these. I just click and drag that up. So now our tracing layer. And this is this is particularly important. We get them in this order. Tracing layer, gradient, and then followed by our blurred layer. Now here's where the fun starts. Select your gradient layer, and you can just do a solid fill color if you want. And instead of the brush tool, we're going to go and switch over to the eraser tool. Selecting on the eraser tool, you'll notice I have my opacity set down to around about 20, around about 20%, somewhere like that, and a soft edge brush as well. And in this case, we'll zoom in. And what this will allow us to do is erase a hole in this gradient layer on the right hand side in a 20% sort of fill. So what we can do is as we paint on this layer, we're actually then going to be knocking a hole through this layer to reveal what is underneath in just a very subtle fashion. So as I paint, you can see I'm starting to reveal part of the blurred layer underneath, which is in fact Mr. Stoddart. I might reduce the size of my brush just a little bit and increase the opacity so I can have a little bit more of an aggressive type painting. And as I paint around, you can see I'm really just painting in the amount of colour that I want. So we, we really want to bring out the skin tones there and the eyes, so we're just painting over there. And then we can start to work on his shirt and it's bringing in the blurred layer. So we don't have to worry about mixing colours and painting in or anything like that. We're using the colour from the photograph to bring in the detail from underneath. And by slowly working it up, you can get a sort of a painterly type effect as, as we reveal some of the brush strokes uh, from the layers underneath. You can also 
use uh, some other colors over here on layers to darken and lighten certain areas to you know add your own special touches I guess to the photograph that you're working on and we'll just zoom out a little bit and uh, just for the sake of the argument let's let's increase the size we'll increase the opacity so I can do this a little bit more quickly for you probably not the best result but um, we certainly certainly can get it uh, going a lot quicker than this I'll paint in his screen of his laptop and his hands a little bit. I think this little bit of paper here, that, that kind of gives a nice effect. And the rest of his shirt down there, maybe a little bit of jeans. As we paint, paint them in. And then we're really starting to get that illustrative type effect. Maybe a little bit of the chair as well, so we get a sense that he's kind of actually anchored to something, rather than nothing at all. Always, always a good idea to make sure that the shadows are, are there. So paint on the, the shadowy area. Let's highlight Michael's face a little bit. And all of a sudden, we're starting to get an illustrative look at Michael Stoddart. I, I just get a sense that my top layer is a little dark. So I'm going to change that blend mode to multiply. So we'll be multiplying the background and then just drop the opacity down so it blends into the image a little bit. So the sketch layer is not too overpowering uh, and there we go we have another illustration of Michael Stoddart so it's certainly a fun technique I really hope uh, you enjoyed uh, learning all about well a little bit about how to use Photoshop touch to do a photo illustration try your own and uh, post them up somewhere and send a link in the comments because I'd love to see what you come up with um, it's a great fun thing I tend to do this while I'm sitting in meetings and I should probably be listening. Um, but that's just me. It keeps me entertained. Thanks again for tuning in to Creative Suite TV. 